Yet you have dealt with us, O Lord our God, in all your kindness and all your great compassion, as you spoke by your servant Moses on the day when you commanded him to write your law in the presence of the people of Israel, saying, If you will not obey my voice, this very great multitude will surely turn into a small number among the nations, where I will scatter them. For I know that they will not obey me, for they are a stiff-necked people. But in the land of their exile they will come to themselves, and they will know that I am the Lord their God. I will give them a heart that obeys the ears that hear, and they will praise me in the land of their exile, and will remember my name, and will turn from their stubbornness and their wicked deeds. For they will remember the ways of their fathers, who sinned before the Lord. I will bring them again into the land which I swore to give their fathers, to Abraham, and to Isaac, and to Jacob, and they will rule over it, and I will increase them, and they will not be diminished, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their God, and they shall be my people. And I will never again remove my people Israel from the land which I have given them. O Lord Almighty, God of Israel, the soul in anguish and the weary spirit cry out to you. Hear, O Lord, and have mercy, for we have sinned before you. For you are enthroned forever, and we are perishing forever. O Lord Almighty, God of Israel, hear now the prayer of the dead of Israel, and of the sons of those who sinned before you, who did not heed the voice of the Lord their God, so that calamities have clung to us. Remember not the iniquities of our fathers, but in this crisis remember your power and your name. For you are the Lord our God, and you, O Lord, we will praise. For you have put the fear of you in our hearts, in order that we should call upon your name. And we will praise you in our exile, for we have put away from our hearts all the iniquity of our fathers who sinned before you. Behold, we are today in our exile, where you have scattered us, to be reproached and cursed and punished for all the iniquities of our fathers who forsook the Lord our God. Hear the commandments of life, O Israel. Give ear and learn wisdom. Why is it, O Israel, why is it that you are in the land of your enemies, that you are growing old in a foreign country, that you are defiled with the dead, that you are counted among those in Hades? You have forsaken the fountain of wisdom. If you have walked in the way of God, you would be dwelling in peace forever. Learn where there is wisdom, where there is strength, where there is understanding, that you may at the same time discern where there is length of days and life, where there is light for the eyes and peace, who has found her place, and who has entered her storehouses. Where are the princes of the nations and those who rule over the beasts on the earth? those who have sport with the birds of the air, and who hoard up silver and gold, in which men trust, and there is no end to their getting, those who scheme to get silver and are anxious, whose labors are beyond measure. They have vanished and gone down to Hades, and others have arisen in their place. Young men have seen the light of day, and have dwelt upon the earth, but they have not learned the way to knowledge, nor understood her paths, nor laid hold of her. Their sons have strayed far from her way. She has not been heard of in Canaan, nor seen in Teman. The sons of Hagar, who seek for understanding on the earth, the merchants of Maran and Teman, the storytellers and the seekers for understanding, have not learned the way to wisdom, nor given through to her paths. O Israel, how great is the house of God, and how vast the territory that he possesses. It is great and has no bounds. It is high and immeasurable. The giants were born here, who were famous of old, great in stature, expert in war. God did not choose them, nor give them the way to knowledge. So they perished because they had no wisdom. They perished through their folly, who has gone up into heaven and taken her, and brought her down from the clouds, who has gone over the sea and found her, and will bury her for pure gold. No one knows the way to her, or is concerned about the path to her, but he who knows all things knows her. He found her by his understanding. He who prepared the earth for all time filled it with four-footed creatures. He who sends forth the light and goes, called it, and is obeyed, and it obeyed him in fear. The stars shone in their watches and were glad. He called them, and they said, Here we are. They shone with gladness for him who made them. This is our God. No other can 
be compared to him. He found the whole way to knowledge, and gave her to Jacob his servant, and to Israel, whom he loved. Afterwards she appeared on earth, and lived among men. She is the book of the commandments of God, and the law that endures forever. All who hold her fast will live, and those who forsake her will die. Turn, O Jacob, and take her. Walk toward the shining of her light. Do not give your glory to another, or your advantages to an alien people. Happy are we, O Israel, for we know what is pleasing to God. Take courage, my people, O memorial of Israel. It was not for destruction that you were sold to the nations, but you were handed over to your enemies because you angered God. For you provoked him who made you by sacrificing to demons and not to God. You forgot the everlasting God who brought you up, and you grieved Jerusalem who reared you. For she saw the wrath that came upon you from God, and she said, Listen, you neighbors of Zion, God has brought great sorrow upon me, for I have seen the captivity of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting brought upon them. With joy I nurtured them, but I sent them away with weeping and sorrow. Let no one rejoice over me, a widow and bereaved of many. I was left desolate because of the sins of my children, because they turned away from the law of God. They had no regard for his statutes. They did not walk in the ways of God's commandments, nor tread the paths of discipline in his righteousness. Let the neighbors of Zion come. Remember the capture of my sons and daughters, with the everlasting brought upon them. For he brought against them a nation from afar, a shameless nation, of a strange language, who had no respect for an old man, and had no pity for a child. They, they led away the widow's beloved sons, and bereaved the lonely woman of her daughters. For a bad name incurs shame and reproach, so fares the double-tongued sinner. Do not exalt yourselves through your soul's counsel, lest your soul be torn in pieces like a bull. You will devour your leaves, and destroy your fruit, and will be left with a withered tree. An evil soul will destroy him who has it, and make him the laughing stock of his enemies. A pleasant voice multiplies friends and softens enemies, and a gracious tongue multiplies courtesies. Let those that are at peace with you be many, but let your advisers be one in a thousand. When you gain a friend, gain him through testing, and do not trust him hastily. For there is a friend who is such at his own convenience, but will not stand by you in your day of trouble. And there is a friend who changes into an enemy, and will disclose a quarrel to your disgrace. And there is a friend who is a table companion, and will not stand by you in your day of trouble. In prosperity he will make himself your equal, and be bold with your servants. But if you are brought low he will turn against you, and will hide himself from your presence. Keep yourself far from your enemies, and be on guard toward your friends. A faithful friend is a sturdy shelter. He that has found one has found a treasure. There is nothing so precious as a faithful friend and no scales can measure his excellence. A faithful friend is an elixir of life, and those who fear the Lord will find him. Whoever fears the Lord directs his friendship aright, for as he is, so is his neighbor also. Yes, and I shall rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance, as it is my eager expectation and hope that I shall not be at all ashamed but that with full courage now, as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If it is to be life in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Convinced of this, I know that I shall remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith, so that in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus because of my coming to you again. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of you that you stand firm in one spirit, with one mind striving side by side for the faith of the gospel and not frightened in anything by your opponents. This is a clear omen to them of their destruction, but of your salvation, and that from God, 
for it has been granted to you, that for the sake of Christ you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake, engaged in the same conflict which you saw and now hear to be mine. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any incentive of love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from self selfishness or conceit, but in humility count others better than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for God is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without grumbling or questioning, that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God, without blemish in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life, so that in the day of Christ I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. Even if I am to be poured as a libation upon the sacrificial offering of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. Likewise, you all should be glad and rejoice with me. Sacred scripture gives us the best advice on how to live a fruitful and holy life. Wisdom, however, is not just good advice or a nice concept. It is the very word of God that is offered to us. Baruch tells us, she, wisdom, is the book of the commandments of God. All who hold her fast will live. Sirach implores the reader to search for wisdom, and when she is found, to never let her go for she brings rest and joy. Despite Paul's hardships, he accepts the gift of wisdom and embraces his sufferings with joy for his people and for Christ. He stresses the necessity of humility and being at the service of others. St. Paul uses Jesus's kenosis or self-emptying as an example of not only dying for others, but living for them as well. Unfortunately, due to original sin, we all suffer, but Uniting our sufferings to Christ and living a life of joy is a choice. Our actions follow our attitude. Living a life of humility in Christ and doing so with joy is a powerful witness to the gospel. How can you spend more time in the wisdom of the word of God?